Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. This week I'm starting out with a painting of a seal and I'm beginning with a Sharpie marker pen on an A4 pad of mixed media paper. So what I'm doing here is just using the reference photo, which I'll show you in a little bit, which I've acquired from Pixabay. And I'm just picking out some of the key lines within the seal. So the seal at a first glance is kind of is kind of a tricky shape to draw, really, because unlike a cow or a horse or something, the lines of the body of a seal are quite subtly curved. And there's the reference. As I said, I got that from Pixabay. We do occasionally, well, we do have seals in the waters around um, Devon and Cornwall, but, you know, they're somewhat elusive. They certainly don't, or at least I've never seen them uh, sit out on the rocks uh, basking in the sun or anything like that. So, so that's why I've gone for the reference photo uh, off of the website there. So as I said, just popping in the, the key lines, not, not worrying about too much detail at all. And then just some indication of, of a rock on top of, you know, on which the seal is kind of lying down there. And then having done that, I'm using some curved contour lines to pop in areas of darker tone. So in other words, I'm picking out the shadows that I think are most important to make this thing look three dimensional. But I'm keeping in mind the surface upon which those shadows are falling. So rather than just colouring a block of dark black, I'm curving my lines to help describe the form of the animal as well. And as I've mentioned in, in previous videos, drawing with the Sharpie is, is a good fun challenge because it's a relative, although, although they, I think it's called a fine line or a fine nib, it's still relatively thick, you know, so you have to be quite careful with your pen pressure to get a reasonably fine line at times. And I'm working on quite a small scale, so I can't get too fussy. But at the same time, I want to include some detail. So I've put a few dots in there around the whiskers and... You know, sometimes I'll get certain detailed areas too heavy with ink. And so that's one of the fun things, because I'm working with watercolour and a little bit of acrylic later as well, um, I can kind of lose some of those uh, errors if I feel they are errors, or if I just want to improve a certain section. Even though the Sharpie marker puts down a dark black permanent line, it's surprising, surprising how well it covers up with a little bit of acrylic or even watercolour if you put it down thickly enough. So I really like working this way at the moment, just for these quick studies. Uh, really expressive, really good fun, and lots of different mark making and colour effects that you can get. So this particular seal has some uh, some patches on, on its skin. So I've included a, just a few of those. Again, being careful to angle them to describe the almost tubular or cylindrical nature of the body adding a few cast shadows on the rocks as well and I have made those really quite dark. So there's the the drawing or the black and white illustration if you like and that's now my guide my guidelines or my framework for the watercolour. So if you saw the raccoon painting the other week I was using this synthetic pointed brush from Jackson's and I mentioned how much I really like it. I, I'm still finding that to be the case because you can put down big swathes of colour but it comes to a beautiful fine point as well. So with just one brush, you can do precise line work or big patches of colour. And what I'm doing here is just putting in some light washes to remove as much of the white paper as possible. And then having done that, you can see I've put some darker washes on now. And I'm just lifting off certain areas while the paint, while the paint is still wet with a, a paper towel. And that's a technique I use a lot when I'm using watercolour. I'll apply paint and lift off certain areas, apply a bit more, go, go a little bit darker, lift off with a paper towel. And now you can see I'm going very dark with almost pure ultramarine blue to put in some shadow areas. And of course, with watercolour being so transparent, you can build up layer upon layer of colour and get some nice colour mixing going on as well. So you can see just there, there's a little pooling of dark blue uh, above the head of the seal. So I'll lift off some of that in a moment. 
and I'm putting down really just some random marks now on, on the rocks, on the ground, just to create an, an element of randomness. And, and when you lift off some of that with the paper towel scrunched up, that creates another random texture as well. So it's quite a nice way of describing things like rocks or grass or tree trunks, things that you don't want to necessarily get too fiddly on, but you want an, that kind of fractal randomness and you want to create that fairly quickly. So you can see in general I'm gradually darkening the shadows and tones that I apply. And I started with mostly cool colours, but I'm adding in a little warm orangey brown now to complement that. And in amongst the, the rocks there are even some greens and some yellows, and so I've included those, but also deliberately added a bit of yellow reflected onto the seal. And that wasn't really there, but I like to enhance the colours. And what I'm doing at the moment is with a dry paper towel, just sorry, a damp paper towel, just scrubbing off some of the the paint I'd put down onto the upper half of the painting, just to soften some of those marks a little bit. So watercolour, even when dry, you know, if you work at it, you can lift some off and, and that as well can produce interesting effects. Now, having completed the, the watercolour bit, I felt that some of the line work was a little bit too heavy in places. So I'm coming in with my interactive acrylics and a small round brush to just soften some of those Sharpie marker pen marks that I made, either on the outline or, as I'm doing at the moment, on those dark patches on the skin of the seal. So I've just decided to make those light, light blue. So what I've done is use the reference photograph as my inspiration for the colours and the line work, but then I've gone off in my own direction and I'm very much working on what I feel works best for the image. Switching to a flat brush now to just enhance some of the uh, the cast shadows. And again, I'm, even though I'm working with acrylic, I'm still kind of working in a watercolour style. You can see I'm lifting off little bits as I put them down with the paper towel. And I just changed the line of the head of the animal there a little bit as well. Just changed the shape subtly. A few highlights with a flat brush. This is almost pure titanium white and I'm using that same colour or perhaps a little bit of yellow to just go over those outline marks. So I don't mind if they show through a bit, but I just want to soften certain areas so that it's not a seal completely outlined in an e with, an evenly, with an even thickness black line. I want there to be some variation in the line work and I've switched to a blue, a light blue now as well. So I want there to be some variation in the colour and thickness and quality of the line work on that outline. So by not being too strict with the colours, not trying to slavishly copy the reference photo, you can come up with something really quite quirky and unusual. And sometimes that works better than others, but you know, on the whole, um, I like the results of these kind of colour experiments. So there's our finished picture of a seal lying on the rocks, mixed media with Sharpie pen, watercolour and acrylic. Hope you enjoyed this little video. As always, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.